Rafik Anadol is an amazing artist who creates captivating digital artworks. I was specially amazed by his beautiful abstract swirling particle animations, so let's learn how to recreate them in Houdini. So let's begin by defining a box we want our particles to swirl around in. I am blasting the front to make it hollow and then extrude it outwards for a bit of thickness. Feel free to bevel the edges if you like. Going back two steps, we can use the original cube to fill it with particles. The particles need some empty space to move around in, so let's only use a small fraction of the cube. Next, we also want interesting shapes from the beginning. So we subdivide the geometry, select the front faces with a group, define a direction and displace the faces with a mountain node. Now we can fill the geometry with points, increase the digit scale to 1 and place on a rest node. The rest position is an incredibly powerful attribute that we can use for all sorts of useful things later. Basically it just saves the particle's position in their current resting state. And if you're confused why that might be useful, stick around, it will make sense in just a bit. Let's prepare our simulation. Inside the dotnet we need the usual stuff for flip simulations, a flip object and a solver. For consistency, let's hook up the particle separation between flip object and the particles from volume node. This controls the amount of generated particles and therefore the resolution of the simulation. We also want the fluid to be contained inside the cube, of course, so it has to collide with it. But let's not waste resources on collision detection when we just collide with the cube. We can actually just close the bounds on the flip object and set the bounds to our cube's size. Using the bounding box and centroid expression, make sure we have a one-to-one -one match between our volume bounds and the cube. The artworks that I was trying to recreate all had a very thick and viscous feeling, where thick folding strands of fluids were forming. And to achieve that I enabled the viscosity on the flip sole and set an overall viscosity of 100 on the flip object. I also introduced a little bit of surface tension, which helps with smooth and rounded shapes. Alright, enough boring setup, let's make the particles move. For this effect, we want to establish a velocity field inside of a volume, so that every point in space has a directional vector. To achieve swirly motion, there is no way around using curl noise, so let's define that. We can start with the previously defined bounds. Peak it a bit, so we have a bit more padding on the sides and particles won't get stuck on the borders of our cube. Create an empty VDB called VEL. Make it a vector float of type velocity and set a voxel size. Now initialize the VDB with a VDB activate node, using the peaked cube as the second input. Now we have a volume filled with a vector information in each voxel. The magic happens inside a volume vob. All we really need is a curl noise and add it to vel, using a bind export set to vector. To see what we are actually doing, the volume trail node is what we need. Set an initial value with a volume wrangle, followed by a points from volume, and our newly created curl noise field in the second input. Set the display flag on the volume trail, dive inside the volume warp and get creative. You can play around with the curl noise settings until you find something that looks interesting in terms of swirliness, flow direction, etc. I went with a lower frequency to achieve bigger swirls and smooth flow. Before we add more complexity, let's add the curl noise to our fluid simulation by adding a pop at vect by volume node and feeding it the path to our volume field. Plug it into the solver and see what it does to the particles. Alright, they are definitely moving around, but I want more broad movement, actually making them flow from the borders into the center in a circular motion. For this, I created a single curve, resampled it to subdivision curves and copied it 8 times with a rotational offset so that I get a whole circle of curves pointing inwards. We need some sort of directional vector attribute to feed into the vector field, and because I want to move the fluid along the curve, we can simply use an orient along curve node to generate the tangent as the vector n. Feed that into the third input of the volume vob and get the points in, using a point cloud open and a point cloud filter. Set it to n to sample each curve's point and read in the value of n. Add that to our current velocity field and see how there are a lot more trails pointing inwards. This will bring particles that are stuck in the back to the front and mixing up the fluid to create beautiful patterns. At this point the technical and nerdy stuff is done. Now let's do the fun stuff and colorize the particles. 
Remember the rest attribute that we defined earlier? Now we can do some real magic with it, enabling us to colorize the particles even after the simulation is done. Drop down an attribute adjust color node set to noise using the twilight color ramp preset. Now this looks ugly and it looks even worse when we hit play. But now watch what happens if we set the location attribute to rest. Okay, now we're talking. Using the rest attribute, we sample the color on the first frame and apply it to the particle. When that particle moves around, it keeps its color value and sort of drags it behind, creating beautiful swirly color patterns. Next, I wanted a bit more definition and contrast in the bright parts. So I added another color adjust node with the same settings but a dark blue to white color ramp and a smaller element size for fine detail. Important here is to set it to minimum so that only the dark values come through. The shot is basically done at this point. I tweaked some settings in the velocity field and made the particle simulation loop using the awesome video by even root effects. I put the link in the video description. Another tip for better results is to run the simulation once for a few hundred frames maybe even with a different offset on the curl noise, and then use the simulated particles as the base for the full simulation. This way you have interesting color patterns from the very beginning, instead of having to wait for the colors to mix first. Rendering this is quite straightforward. Sop import both the cube and the particles, followed by a material library. The box gets a black glossy material with high roughness. The particles use the Material X geometry color for the base color. Full specularity and low roughness, so they are nice and shiny. I also made them fade in brightness the further back they are, to fake some depth. Place down one area light from above and two from the sides, as well as a dome light for some overall brightness. Now it's just a matter of playing with interesting camera angles and depth of field to render a sequence. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to comment down below. Cheers!